What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters. You are watching the Car Passion channel and today I'll be introducing you to an awesome and very useful tool called Virtual Dyno. It's a program that pretty much takes a data log from your ECU and turns its information into a pretty accurate dyno graph. So it's an awesome tool, but a tool is only as good as the person using it. So if it's not set up properly or it's used incorrectly, you're not gonna get good results. So that's what this video is all about. I'll show you start to finish how to do pulls properly and how to use this program properly. So how does virtual dyno work? And what it does is it looks at RPM versus time and then you give it a bunch of parameters. You tell it how much your car weighs, how much you weigh, what your tire size is, what your gearing is, and it knows the uh, wind resistances of several different cars, and it takes that RPM versus time information, and it now turns it into mass versus speed. And if you can calculate how quickly a mass is accelerating, you can get an accurate horsepower graph. So first things first, I'm going to hop into the Miata and show you how to do the best pulls for virtual dyno. There are two main things that you have to consider. Number one, you've got to avoid doing anything that uncorrelates the relationship between speed and RPM, aka clutch slip or wheel spin. Virtual Dyno is a great program, but it's not very smart. So if you get wheel spin, Virtual Dyno is gonna think that the car hit VTEC and actually accelerated as quickly as your RPM shot up, and you'll get a massive horsepower spike. Now since we're not dealing with Hondas here, we don't get those large horsepower spikes. For that reason, I usually do my pulls in third gear as opposed to second gear. If you've got any sort of swap or forced induction in your Miata or whatever car you're using, it's gonna be more prone to wheel spin in a lower gear. And it doesn't even have to blow the tires off. Even if you're putting down power and you hit a small bump in the road, even a reflector, that little blip of wheel spin is enough to throw off the graph. Number two, virtual dyno assumes that you're on flat ground and not working with or against gravity. So if you're doing a pull on an uphill or over a hump or on a downhill, it's gonna change that RPM versus time relationship that you would have if you were on a perfectly flat surface. So if you do a pull on an uphill, your RPM is gonna climb much slower than usual and Virtual Dyno is gonna tell you you don't have any power. Same thing on a downhill, your RPM will climb faster than usual. Virtual Dyno will tell you you have more horsepower than you actually do, which is gonna look cool on the graph, but it defeats the purpose of shooting for accuracy. So now that we're all experts on how to do the perfect pull, let's go put our skills to the test in the real world. Just in case you're not familiar with how to do a data log in Tuner Studio, you just click on data logging, start log, don't start it yet. You wanna start the log just before your pull. So I'm gonna get out on the road, I'm gonna to get to my starting RPM, I'm gonna hit save, it'll start the log. As soon as I finish the pull, I'll let off the throttle, come back up here to data logging, and stop. With a tablet, this makes it pretty easy to do by myself, but if you're using a laptop, it's better if you have a friend. So I'm at my favorite computer-generated road in outer space, the flattest one I know of, and I'm gonna do several pulls because you never know if one pull is gonna be good. Sometimes you can't even feel a little wheel hop or a little wheel spin, so just come out and do several. We'll take the good ones and see how they look. Just gotta wait for all these spacecraft to clear out of here. Let's hop onto the laptop and see what we find. So first go over and open the Virtual Dyno program. This is a free program. There is a donate link, so if you like it a lot, maybe throw the guy a couple bucks who designed it. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Also open Megalog Viewer and open the data log which you are planning on putting into Virtual Dyno. Get that opened up and then we'll save this for later. Next step in Virtual Dyno, go to Profiles and you're gonna add your own car here. Throwing in the VVT Beast. And it's got all these different cars and it uses, it knows the gear ratios and the coefficient of drag for all these different cars. So we're gonna go to Mazda, Miata, and mine is an NA. 
if you've got a six speed in your NA, you would have to choose an NB so it knows the ratios, but it's gonna be close enough on the wind resistance. I did it in third gear. Now I'll put in my tire specs and it will calculate the diameter for me. The weight of my car, fully loaded with fluids at 2240. My weight, virtual dyno, continuously reminding me that I need to lay off of the taco shop. And final drive is a 3909. And we're gonna save. Now under options, I've got a couple things set up here. My dyno, I always use dyno jet because that is the actual dyno that I always put the Miatas on. So it's gonna give me the most accurate result compared to a real dyno jet. And I have it set up on horsepower and pound feet of torque. Now load the same run that you have loaded in Megalog Viewer. And we'll see how this looks. It looks like nothing because I have to select my profile. There we go. All right, so that looks cool, uh, except for one little problem. The very high end definitely got some wheel hop there. You could see a massive hump in horsepower because the RPM spun up and Virtual Dyno thought that the car actually accelerated that quickly. 326 horsepower, I know the car is not making that much right now. So that run is pretty much a throwaway, but I have another one saved up that I know is a good clean run. So let's see what that one looks like. All right, that's looking much smoother. So I'll just delete this first run. That is a much more accurate result there. So Virtual Dyno is coming up with 295 horsepower, 244 pound-feet of torque, and a roughly accurate curve. Now my boost down here is messed up. It's saying I have like no boost, and that is just a configuration setting. See how this is called Boost PSI in Megalog Viewer? I'm gonna jump back into Virtual Dyno under Options, Columns and Profiles, and on this Boost category, I'm gonna type it it's the same exact way it shows up in Megalog Viewer, Boost PSI, save that, and now we have an accurate boost curve. You can see exactly what RPM it's coming on, how it maintains, and you can also see you know, how, how good your, um, your boost controller is working there. I mean, obviously you can see that in Megalog Viewer as well, but it's cool to see it all at once where you can see how the torque is coming on, watching your AFR with the boost. Obviously the car right now is going pretty rich in the high end that still needs a little bit of fine tuning. The last thing you can do to make it super, super accurate is check out your manifold air temperature in Megalog Viewer. That's why I opened the log here as well. 87 degrees at peak horsepower. So I'm gonna go in and correct this and put the air temperature at 87 degrees and it's actually showing a little bit higher horsepower. It's called SAE correction. It's basically saying your car will make this much horsepower at 77 degrees. You did this pull at 87 degrees and it only technically made 294, but once you tell it, hey, it was 87 degrees out and it made 294, it's saying after SAE correction, the car actually makes 298 wheel horsepower. So that's just a tiny little difference. It's not even really mandatory, but if you want the most accurate results, you can throw that in there. So that's pretty much Virtual Dyno. Now you can go out and change your boost settings, overlay as many graphs as you want and see what changes what. And it's, it's actually a pretty accurate tool to use. It's really fun, especially if you don't even have access to a dyno, if you're just doing street tuning and you wanna know roughly what your car makes. It's, it's an awesome tool for that. So now you guys know how to use it. All right, guys, well, I had a blast making this video. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like subscribe if you are new and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.